So you got the saxophone that you wanted. It was six thousand dollars. You got the reeds that you wanted, maybe twenty to forty bucks, depending on what saxophone you have. Tenor, alto, buried, soprano, contrabass, bass, so on and so forth. You even got the mouthpiece that you wanted, that was almost six hundred dollars, and it was metal and it had nice, nice gold plate on it. You know, and you're like, wow, I sound good, but I don't sound great. And I've been practicing and practicing my long tones. I've been practicing my tonality. I've been practicing my high register, my low register, my dynamics and everything. But something just feels slightly off and I feel like it could be better. Or have you ever given your ligature a try? Did you ever try to switch it out? Did you ever try something new and say, oh, wow, I sound a lot better. Or I sound more like I want to sound. Well, your ligature plays a big part in your sound. And it will behoove you to get a great ligature. Here's the top five reasons why you need to get a great saxophone ligature. So you got all this great stuff, but your armature is lacking. Why? Because your ligature isn't bringing the best out of your reed and your, your reed basically vibrates. If you're not getting the best vibrations out of your reed, your armature will suffer. And that's a very, very important thing when you're playing over three hours and stuff like that. Now, if you're if your if your armature is good, it's gonna last for a good amount of time. If your armature is great, it's gonna last for a great amount of time. But if you have a good ligature, that will extend the amount of time that you're able to play. Why? Because the vibrations in the reed are very efficient. So whatever notes you want to play is exactly the pitch you want to play it. The response of your saxophone is probably going to be a little bit better. Now, for those of you who haven't been playing a saxophone for a while, you probably won't notice this. But if you're playing exactly what you want to play and you're playing exactly what you want to hear, those adept players who've been playing for over six years probably notice the difference. Matter of fact, no, they do notice the difference. When you have a different li different ligature, and say, for instance, the Robin versus the Winslow ligature versus the, uh, you know, the, uh, maybe Theo Wani has some different ligatures, you know, or maybe even LaBelle has some different ligatures, Rico has different ligatures, Van Doren has different ligatures, and they all make your sound sound different. Now, it's more than likely vibrations that they affect, but sound is vibrations. So, if your ligature controls the vibrations and how your mouthpiece portrays vibrations through your horn, then you need to get, you know, a, a good ligature. So, your armature is very important because you can play longer, you can do more of what you think you should sound like doing. And that might not make sense to you now, but if you think you should sound a certain way, if you keep playing your saxophone a certain way and it takes a lot of effort for you to play the way you think you should play, then it's probably your ligature. So the more effort you use to cajole your mouth to get that certain sound, it's going to take more effort. You're going to have less energy. You're going to have less mouth muscles to manipulate, you know, because they're so tired after three hours playing a gig. So. Make sure you get a good um, ligature because your armature is very important to preserve. Number four, vibrations. Now, once the reed is clamped, clasped just enough for the reed not to move in place, the ligature plays a very important role throughout your entire playing of your instrument. You see what I'm saying? So it's like if you have nothing to hold your reed to your mouthpiece, nothing comes out of your saxophone. Nothing comes out of your saxophone. So don't think that investing in some good material ligature isn't worth it. You have, you have to, you must, you have to, have to, have to invest in a great ligature. Why? Like you wouldn't buy a, a car with no tires, would you? Or instead of tire, you can think of a, a reed like a nut or a washer or a lug nut. Even though they're small and they're on your tires or your rims, excuse me, they're on your rims. <laughs> Even though your lug nuts are on your rims, it's like they're cheap, yeah, but wouldn't you want some pretty good lug nuts to hold your rim in place? Because if you don't, your whole car is going to fall apart. It's the little things that matter is what I'm saying, you know. So when you're out buying your ligature, think about that. Now, different ligatures do different things, but certain ligatures actually restrict purposefully the vibrations of the reed. 
So you have to know what your ligature does. Like ravenous, ravenous cover the entire reed. So think about it. If you were to cover your whole body, then that probably restricts you from going somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Or restricts you from doing some things. Now, it wouldn't restrict your entire movement, right? So say, for, for instance, you were covering yourself with, I don't know, a tent or covering yourself with some covers or comforter, right? Well, you couldn't exactly do exactly what you were intended to do. And some people like that kind of sound, that restricted sound, that classical sound, that focused, restricted sound. You don't have the ability to do many shouts, cries, and growls, and the actual horn itself is tame. The saxophone is a very edgy horn, and the vibrations are very, very edgy. So when you buy that reed, and you buy that ligature, that ligature is going to be like, okay, well, Reed, if you're very edgy and you're not focused, I'm going to cover you, especially with the, you know, um, the, the Ravner, the Ravner, the, the leather edition, because, you know, they come out with different ones that don't restrict your movement when, when you're playing with that Reed. And when I, by movement, I mean vibration. So that vibration is extremely important. Now, if you're like a rock, type saxophone player or you play any type of contemporary music you probably want that ability for your, your your voice to be heard or your instrument to sing so you probably want more vibrations so you probably get something like a rico h ligature or you know something like a a winslow saxis ligature or they call it saxis i think that was like the the side brand that came up with some extra type of ligature that was kind of like the winslow ligature but these ligatures really do help you do what you want to do as long as you get the correct one as long as it's a decent one you know you know it's not it's going to be you know most ligatures don't cost over about two hundred dollars but just think about just think about what you invest in to get the best sound out of your saxophone Number three, tonality. Tone is how your saxophone sounds from the top to the bottom. Tonality. How even does your sound sound from the top to the bottom? You see what I'm saying? Are the highs very rich? Is that what you want? Are the lows very dark, vamp, and, and, and arid sounding? Have you ever heard uh, Stephen Riley play? He has a very airy tone to his saxophone. But that's a good mouthpiece reed ligature setup. You see what I'm saying? So ligatures do play a factor when you're trying to get a certain sound. Like I said in the last one. But this one is going to be more geared towards tonality. Now, say for instance, uh, you have the Van Dorn Optimum ligature. The Van Dorn Optimum ligature is very, very interesting because it gives you three separate pressure plates. Why are pressure plates important, might you ask? You might be like, oh, well, it's pressure plates, man. I'll just pick one and just use that all the time. Well, no, they give you pressure plates for a reason. Like, like these companies don't, don't just come up with these ideas out of the side of their minds or the side of their heads. They come up, they spend millions of dollars producing these things, these ligatures that have certain things, you know, that are different about them because... They do certain things to your sound, and professionals will understand this. You, I saw um, when I was in high school, the high school all county band. I saw this kid with this Van Dorn Optimum ligature, and I was like, "Oh man, he's in high school, and he knows the benefit of that you know, ligature. He knows that hey, if I pr change this pressure plate or this pressure plate, it'll give me this sound, and this pressure plate, it'll give me this sound. I think it's probably one of the most uh, valuable ligatures out there on the market. Why? Because it gives you so many choices to contour and change your sound. Now, Van Doren has written out, you know, what each pressure plate does, but it, it really helps you find what genre that you want to play. It really helps you contort your sound to a certain tone, to a certain, to a certain way. You see what I'm saying? So your tonality is going to be based off of whatever pressure point or pressure plate, excuse me, they have points on them. Whatever pressure plate you choose is going to be
based off of what genre you like to play or what you think your saxophone should, should sound like. Maybe you're a crossover saxophone. So maybe you have more than one genre and you have one central sound that you want to go by. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of different ways you can go about buying a ligature that matches your tone. Because your tone, maybe you want richer highs and dark lows. But maybe those, you know, uh, default or stock ligatures that you get with your mouthpiece when you first buy your saxophone don't give you that freedom. They Maybe they have just one natural type of tone, and that's the basic tone throughout the entire horn. It doesn't, they don't let the reed breathe in, 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 when you want a rich high, or they don't let the reed breathe when you want that low, arid, vampy, low sound of the low notes. <laughs> so... Make sure you get the correct ligature for the tone that you want because that is so very important. It could be the difference between you getting on fire on stage, which means I don't mean that literally. I mean that figuratively. Like when you're on fire on the basketball court, you know, it might be because your shoes helped you get to that certain feeling or get to that certain spot that you wanted to and helped you remember muscle memory. The things that you did in practice. You see what I'm saying? So ligature can help you do that too. Maybe there's certain vibrations of a certain note makes you sound makes it sound a certain way, and then you end up getting on fire and you're like, wow, man, I didn't know my saxophone could sound like that. I only made that happen in practice. But since I have a ligature that's consistent and doesn't bend when it's not supposed to, and it's very, you know, rigid and it doesn't affect my vibrations uh, the way I don't want it to. It made it sound like I did want it to. So tonality is very important because it could be the difference between you playing a good gig and a not so good gig based off of your armature ligature read setup. Now, I don't need to tell you twice. Air is extremely important. Even a non-saxophone player or non-instrumentalist for that matter knows that air is important to play an instrument. Air is important for everything we do in life. If you're singing, if you're dancing anything you that invi involves you living air is important but especially for instrumentalists when we put air out into our horns we have to put a lot of air for certain notes maybe more air than others maybe we want to have a certain type of a uh, of, of a sound a certain type of vibe well we need that certain type of air to go behind that vibe we need a certain type of air that that very that varies your sound now Say, for instance, you had the correct ligature or the, the, the great ligature that you just bought because you listened to this video. This ligature should help you make the sound that you want due to the air it helps you provide to the saxophone. You see what I'm saying? So, will you put, it's like blowing a balloon. When you put air into a balloon, it's not easy to put air into a balloon. Why? Because that balloon won't get that air because of the narrow end. It's like a bottleneck. It has a narrow end at the point where you put your lips on the balloon. So you're not going to be able to put as much air through there. But if you have the proper ligature on your saxophone, it won't feel much like a balloon. Now, it's going to have a little bit of a bottleneck effect to it because it's a saxophone. You can't just blow all the air that you want to in it and expect to have the exact effect that you want. But if that reed is just the way you want to on that mouthpiece, just the way you want to, you will conserve a lot more air because your reed is vibrating. And it doesn't even take that much effort for your reed to vibrate. Why? Because your ligature has is designed for you to be able to play at the drop of a dime at any time you want to. It's just no feedback when you go to play your saxophone. Why? Because that ligature is on there and it is serving you the way you want to because you bought the one that you wanted to. Now, try these ligatures out before you buy them, but I know for a fact that the ligature that I want is that Winslow ligature. The Winslow ligature that's handmade and it has like the rubber bushings on the bottom of them and, and it's very extremely flexible. It's almost like it's supposed to make your reed feel like it's almost sitting on midair. Like... It's very, very free blowing. It's very, very. It's just a read. It's just a read. Mouthpiece read combination that I want. It's that ligature. It's like one of the best ones I've ever played on because it made my playing effortless. And like I said in my previous saxophone episodes, that when you're playing, you want to sound like you. You want to sound like there was no f. You want to feel like it. Not only sound like you want to feel like it. Now, if you're in the water and you're having trouble breathing and you're a professional swimmer, 
you may not be feeling like you're doing a great job that day. Why? Because you're air. The physical effort that you put into doing that is not as easy as it used to be. Or something happened or something's different. Or if you got a snorkel on, it's not as easy to breathe because it might take a little bit of time getting that air funneling out of the snorkel. It's not as easy if you were free blowing or free breathing. Free blowing in this case because we have the Winslow ligature or I want to get the Winslow ligature. Or you maybe you even have that ligature. It's a very expensive ligature. Why? Because it has rave reviews. Now, you have to understand now, air is very important, but if you're like a classical player, you want to put all your air into your horn, you want to get that full sound, but you also want a long tonish type of sound. What I mean by that, sometimes in classical pieces, or a lot of times in classical pieces, you're doing a lot more dynamic movement. You're very expressive. It's very, very ensemble oriented. And what I mean by ensemble oriented, that if you're trying to blend with another horn, you're gonna need as much air as that person playing beside you. So you're gonna need a a, a, a reed that also doesn't Oh, not a reed, but a reed ligature setup that also doesn't let you branch out or freak blow as much. Why? Because you're playing an ensemble. If you're playing an ensemble, you won't want you're gonna want a a, a Ravner type ligature, one that doesn't let your reed just do whatever it wants to, or doesn't let your sound become so free blowing. Because that Ravner ligature, what it does is it is it centers your sound. It makes it. It makes it very, very strong, but in the center of the pitch, it doesn't it doesn't stretch the pitch too much. It doesn't let your 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 highs get too rich because the saxophone is rich. So, you know, especially if you have a mouthpiece that, you know, is very rich on some tones than others, you know. So it helps that reed stay in its spot and help you blend with other people who are playing around you. That Robin is good for that. But if you're playing by yourself and you want to be able to sing and be an individual, then that, that Winslow ligature or that Rico H ligature is for you. Something that doesn't put too much pressure around the entire reed covering it up. And one last but not least. Last but not <coughs> Last but not least, number one. Now, come on, guys. You always know. When I wish you good sound, I wish you good sound. Number one is sound. Ligatures help you get the sound you want to. It, it, they, they, Just like a mouthpiece, it helps you get the sound you want to. Have you ever, you know, blow or blown on a woodwind instrument that, that wasn't playing the way it was supposed to play? Or you maybe you switched ligatures and had a bad mouthpiece reset up. Man, that could shoot your whole day. That could make your, your whole you know, your whole day a shot. Why? Because you got a bad ligature or you had to switch to a ligature that you didn't want to. Why? Because your sound won't be the sound that you want to. Maybe you sound too much like a radio saxophone, or maybe you sound like a like a MIDI file saxophone, and you want to sound more like a nitty gritty saxophone player. You know, the sound is very important because you want to sound like you. So that means you need to experiment with as many ligatures as possible, and try out your fav favorite read on your favorite mouthpiece, and then lastly. Just switch out ligatures and see how your sound differentiates. Now, if you haven't, been, if you've been playing for maybe one or two years, or you know, maybe you might not notice the difference of the reed. Why, uh, or the uh, ligature? Why the reed to the ligature? Because if you've been playing for about three years or less, you may not know the difference of the ligature to the saxophone or the ligature to the reed. Why? Because you still haven't play the horn to its extent, its extent, extent. And maybe you haven't played the horn or you haven't played other horns. You know, maybe you missing something that you never played before. I, as a middle school um, saxophonist, I didn't know what I was missing until I was able to play one of my friend's horns. I was like, wait, whoa, this is totally different from my horn. And the reason is because I've been playing in different environments. I've heard my saxophone in different environments. And I know what certain notes sound like. My favorite notes are the ones that I like to play with. You know, guys, I like to play the E, the L sharp on the alto saxophone. That's concert A. That's concert G. And those are two of my favorite um, saxophone notes on the saxophone, especially on the tenor. Um, because when you're playing that, like you just... You, you, 
from my, in my opinion, that's the middle of the horn. That's where the horn is most balanced, in my opinion. And that's where the horn, I, I feel, shines the best. It has the most width when it comes to tonality, that, 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 that L-sharp and that E, or concert A and concert E. So, uh, excuse me, concert G. So, when you're trying to get your best sound, you have to buy the ligature that you need. You have to buy the ligature that you know you need. Why? Because I'm wishing you guys good sound. And you can't have good sound without a good mouthpiece, reed, ligature setup, and saxophone setup. They vary depending on what kind you have. But you have to experiment. I cannot stress enough. You have to experiment with your sound to get the sound that you want. This is Dev from Project Sax. Wish you guys good sound. Mm -hmm.